name is Jared Carter, and I want to introduce you to myself and my classroom. Since I am not able to come to Washington, I felt this would be a nice way for you to see kind of my philosophy and what I do for students to help them. As I come in, you'll notice I have my binder, minder, and daily tables up here, uh, basically showing, hey, here's what we're going to do today, kids. Let's look up here. This is a reminder for kids that we do every day on the board, which I'll show later. But if they're absent a day, they can come back and find this. We make sure to post grades very often. You can't see them, but they are right here. Uh, keep them up to date every week and a half, two weeks or so, that students are always aware of how they're doing and what they might need to fix. We keep our uh, informational stuff on the walls, dress code, behavior policy, mission statements. We go over all this stuff in the beginning of the year. They're the same in every class, so students aren't going to be surprised uh, why they might be receiving a consequence for certain behaviors. Now, as we come along this wall, uh, you'll notice I like my classrooms very colorful. I want to make sure that they kind of pop and that the eye is going to be attracted to them. And we make a lot of custom posters and custom graphs and charts to try to help the students understand concepts that they struggle with. This one shows that we do academic vocabulary terms, which are, of course, terms that are used in instructions on tests that students might not know. The philosophy behind this is if the student doesn't know what's being asked, how can they answer a question? Over here you'll see we have the two governments of the United States. This covers one of our units, which is the government's Bill of Rights, how a bill becomes a law, and the first political parties. Also notice that I've color-coded the two different types of government we talk about, federal and state, so students can see the differences between the two. So even without being able to read it, they'll know that the state one's red, and it's way bigger than the national government in the Articles of Confederation. So visually, they can get some cues. Over here, we have our federal government. You'll see uh, we put this all together. This is all custom made. Um, and it shows our basic ideas. And I wanted something, students struggle with this every year. I wanted something that students would be able to look at and get an idea of what we're asking. So basic information, bright, colorful, color-coded. Uh, it's what we try to do as much as possible. Now as you can see, I want my classroom to be a very pleasant place to learn. I want it clean, I want it organized. Uh, I try to give students ownership by showing them different art pieces that both I've made, students from the past have made, and I encourage them to add it. I like seeing that creative aspect of the skills our students have. We also try to use technology whenever possible. This is a document, Hovercam, and with it I can actually do work here and walk the students along so they can see how something goes or how something should be completed in the proper way. It's been very useful. Uh, we also, at our school, have access to Chromebooks. Now right now it's only a one to four ratio with the students, but when we have an opportunity, we want to do all our writing, all our summarizing, our arguments, our essays on the Chromebooks and Google Docs. That way I can actually grade it paperlessly and students can get feedback and uh, different comments and it will be there forever for them. Here you can see another visual. This is a large map of the U.S. As the year goes on, I fill in the map more and more. So there will be lines for the Louisiana Purchase, for the Missouri Compromise, and other things that we study. Again, a visual reference that students really need because they struggle with concepts without that. We want to make sure our whiteboard space is used as uh, productively as possible. Here, very visibly, when the students walk in, they have two things to do every day. They're going to write down their binder reminder, which tells them something that they're going to need to remember to succeed in this class, whether it be finishing an assignment, studying for a test, or just enjoying their weekend. Uh, today, you can see we're actually involving an app called Remind 101. Uh, students are going to be able to receive messages from me one way to remind them if they aren't looking at their binder reminder while they're at home. All of this stuff is done in our student workbook, which I created. And everything that they write in here, whether it's the binder reminder in the back, or the table of contents right here, as you'll see in the front, we make it so that students, when they miss something, they're going to know what they missed. The I was absent excuse does not exist in this class. As we move further, we're going to see the kind of Things that we'll put up, we of course tell what unit we're on, we tell what standard we're doing, focus questions, what we should know by the end of this, 
these help guide us in our lessons and help students kind of fun, uh, understand exactly what is expected of them. Here, this is a system I made for marking the text in history. We tried the language arts one with the pluses and negatives and exclamation marks, but it didn't really apply to us. So instead, we broke them down into these five categories. So when students read text and have a difficulty understanding, they're going to be able to use these simple symbols and try to help them get a better idea of what that text is about. Over here we see examples of student work. It's important to have work up on the wall, whether it be the art from the previous wall or work that's completed academically to try to help them learn content. Anything on my walls is really meant to guide the students and aid them in completing the class successfully. You'll notice I don't keep posters up that say good job or anything like that. We're going to tell them that stuff ourselves. On the rest of the wall, you'll notice that I've put up curtains. I believe it's important for students to feel safe and comfortable in the place that they're going to learn and that it be pleasant. I believe, uh, I believe it was Bill Bratton's theory of the broken window. If something's out of place or a window is broken on a car in front of a building, that if people see that broken window, they're going to go ahead and continue to deface that car. I believe it's the same with the classroom. If they come in, the classroom is organized and neat, they're going to respect it more and know that it is a place that they can trust and a place that they're meant to learn. You'll also notice some empty walls here. Not everything should be filled in the beginning of the year. I like the students to see things happen as they go. That way, they can gain ownership of the classroom by seeing their own work up there, and they can see it as a process, just like history is. We also work in groups in my classroom. The idea of collaboration is very important, not only in school, but also in the workplace. Companies like Google and Apple want 21st century skills from their students, from our students and their new employees, and we do our best to try to give them that. I do appreciate you taking the time to see what I have to offer, and I hope that if there is an opening sometime in the future, that you might consider me. Again, my name is Jared Carter. Thank you very much. It's time to get back to work.